Hey everyone, it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets and welcome to the Under the Sea hashtag hop day two. I'll talk a little bit more about the hop as we go through the video. This is the card that I made and then I'm going to show you some of the supplies that I used. I did add some things after I took that picture and here is a kind of a walkthrough of some of the things that I used. This Stampendous Stamp Set Mermaid Kiddo. Two Distress Oxides in Salty Ocean and Broken China, Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink, the Crafter's Workshop Swirl Stencil, and then a couple pieces of cardstock. So that light blue is five and a quarter inches square, and the dark blue is five and a half by 11, and we're going to score it at five and a half, so we have a five and a half inch square card. A little bit different than what I normally make. I don't normally make square cards, but I was just in the mood. Something about that stamp set just to me felt like it called for a square stamp or a square card. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the two Distress Oxides and just kind of ink up the background. This is not going to be perfect. There's not going to be a great blend on it. I'm just taking the Broken China and putting it in certain areas and then I'll go in with the Salty Ocean and cover most of it. Now I've never done this before with glitter gloss so I just wanted to see how this would come out. I really like the way it came out. I wasn't too sure if you were going to be able to see it and you can't really um, if I had used a stencil with a little bit of larger uh, open areas you probably would have seen or I'm um, sorry covered areas on the stencil you would have been able to see the background a little bit better but it was a step that I just wanted to see how it would come out. The paper is 65 pound cardstock from Recollections so it did take um I probably would use something a little bit thicker next time because it warped a little bit. So I'm just taking my Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer and spraying it a couple times and wiping it off with my cloth just to kind of do those little droplets to make it look like it's under the sea. Now you can see that's warped and then I go and put some glitter gloss on top of it. So there was a little bit of warping on that paper. Probably you maybe would have used 110 pound cardstock and uh, inked it up but for the purposes of this it came out fine I don't think that you can really tell I'm looking at it right now you can tell there's a little bit of warping but I think it's just my super critical eye so now I'm just taping down the stencil into place just trying to make sure that it's taped to the mat and not to the actual paper because I did cut it to five and a quarter by five and a quarter. What I probably would have done if I did this again, I probably would have done a five and a half inch square. So that way I could cut it down and um, I didn't have to worry about going edge to edge. So now I'm taking that glitter gloss in Pool Party from Kindred Stamps and I am just spreading it over the stencil. It's almost like applying uh, icing on cupcakes or a cake. So I'm just smoothing everything out. I kind of got some uh, lumps in certain places and you'll see me. I'll go back and forth and smooth it out. Just try to make sure that it got into every little nook and cranny of the stencil. The one thing about this, I probably should have used my Pixie Spray, which by the way, I've still never used. I don't know why I've never used it, but I haven't. This would have been a great stencil to use that with so that the uh, glitter gloss didn't get underneath the stencil. It didn't really get underneath the stencil with this, but it would have made it so that basically the glitter gloss could not have gotten under there. I feel like I used a lot of glitter gloss in this. Uh, I don't think there was a lot in this pot and you can see that some of it has dried up on the lid and I think this is only the second time that I've used it. But I do love using it, I love the results of it. So there you see me scraping it off and I will put the rest back into the pot and then I will take my stencil over and clean it off. That's one of the most important things to do is to make sure you clean your stencil as soon as you are done because you don't want the glitter gloss or any of um, like embossing paste or anything to dry to your stencils. So I just showed you the finished results and here is that Stampendous Mermaid Kiddo stamp that we are going to ink up with Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. This I use this ink because one, it's new and it's very, very inky. And I knew that I would get a really good impression the first time I stamped it down. But it does take a little while for it to dry. So I stamped it and then I kind of picked out my Ohuhu markers and put this to the side. 
Now, with this, uh, the coloring of this, I think it was stamped beautifully, and I'm showing you there. The coloring of this was a little bit interesting because initially I thought I was going to do pink and purple hair for the mermaid, and as you'll see, that really didn't turn out right, so I kind of go over it with all purple. So I will read you off the colors of Ohuhu markers that I used for this entire thing for all of the images. I used uh, 6, 8, 9, 26, and 27, that's for the skin, BG5, that was for the seahorse. I used 44 for the crown, 46 and 47, 51 and 52 for her fin, and I think that was it. I think I used those four colors for her fin. And fins, and then 71 and 74 for the seahorse again the 74 was for the kind of the wings I guess on the seahorse and the 71 was for her eyes I uh, used 81 82 83 84 and 86 so that was everything that I used for this I did use a lot of markers and it's going to take me a little while to do this I would not follow the way that I color this is definitely not a great way to color I'm used to using brush markers and if you saw some of my other videos, I talk about why I got the Ohuhu bullet tip ones. I bought these for my nieces when they come over and craft with me, but I've been using them lately. And because I want to get used to them and show them how to use them. So I think that I need to practice with them before I can show the girls how to use them. But anyway, uh, Brooklyn does, she pushes down on the brush marker. So I decided to get the nib instead of the brush. Right, so anyway, so while I'm figuring out this whole coloring thing, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the hop. It is a three-day hashtag hop. Every day we'll have a different hashtag. So this one is the second day. So it's hashtag Friday under, this, under the sea. And you can click on the hashtag in my video title or you can type it into YouTube and you will be able to see all of the videos that come up with that. Now people are also doing this over on Instagram. So you can type in that hashtag on Instagram and you'll be able to see everyone's cards as well as there are also some blogs. So if I can find out which who is doing blogs I will link the blogs below just so that they can get credit for it because I'm not exactly sure how you if you do just a blog I don't know how you find it unless you go to say WordPress and type in the hashtag so you can try to do that but I don't a hashtag uh, blogger and WordPress are some of the common ones but then other people have their own so um, if I find those uh, blogs, I will list them below for you guys to go over and check it out. Uh, day one, I watched the videos and so much great inspiration, beautiful videos, so many great techniques and ideas and stamp sets that I've never seen before. So if you guys haven't checked out day one, please go over and check it out. Everybody is super creative and did something really, really neat for day one. So anyway, this is getting back into the coloring and this is when I realize, yeah, it's not going to work. So I need to come up with a plan B, which is normally how I am when I color because things, I have a vision in my head and it never seems to go the way I have it planned. Does anybody else have that kind of trouble where they have a card idea in their mind and the way it turns out is completely different? or a color scheme in mind and then you end up not using any of that at all or is it just me because I think I feel like that happens an awful lot so anyway now you can see I was coming back in with some of those purple markers and covering up most of the pink but I like the pink underneath because it gives it kind of highlights again don't follow my coloring because I am definitely not great at coloring but I wanted to leave this in to show you guys when you make a mistake there's almost always a way to fix it. Uh, I hate throwing something away or starting over again and I'm trying to teach Madeline that because she is so much a perfectionist and unfortunately she's so me and if she doesn't do something absolutely correctly or what she thinks is correct she gets really upset. 
for example, this weekend we were down the shore and my mom had bought them mermaids and Madeline was drawing her mermaid and one of the hands of the mermaid she drew wasn't exactly where she wanted it to be and she got all kinds of upset. So I just felt terrible because she was crying and, you know, she did an amazing job and I tried to tell her that, it, you know, we could fix it and I tried to show her how we could fix it and she didn't want any of that. So I'm trying to be more patient with them when they craft, when things like that happen because I also need to be patient with myself when things like that happen because Nothing is really so far, most things aren't so far gone that you can't save them somehow, kind of like I did here. Anyway, sorry, I went a little bit off camera uh, for the coloring, but it's really the same thing. I'm just going in and adding some flick marks so that it kind of looks like hair. Um, I'm not great at these markers. I'm not really great at Copics either. There are definitely people that if you wanted to learn how to color, I would really suggest Sandy Olmec. Courtney Krieber, um, who else is, oh, Kelly Latavola is amazing with coloring. There are so many talented artists with uh, Copic markers or alcohol markers, so much better than I am, but, you know, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't follow the way that I'm doing it. So any, anyway, now I am into the greens and coloring in the mermaid's tail, uh, this whole hop was such a great idea to take one theme and do it over three days. I'm having a lot of fun. I still do have to do my video for Saturday and I'll work on that tomorrow, but I, um, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving the, the theme of this. And of course I'm always very last minute. So <laughs> I'm doing the videos the night before they are due to go up. Okay. So I'm taking the lighter color blue, oh, sorry, blue, the lighter color green marker and coloring in the where I would think the lightest part of her mermaid fin would be or her tail would be and then I am just going to go in with the uh, with uh, 44 and color in her crown again this is kind of I I left a lot of this coloring in but it's pretty basic I kind of just go in with the darkest color marker and then take the lighter color marker blend it out to where the highlights would be and that's just pretty much how I always color uh, unless it's a red and then I start out with my lightest color and then go over that light with the darkest color to kind of get the paper saturated a little bit I learned that trick from Courtney Krieber who again is one of the people that I said if you really want to see how somebody colors with Copic or alcohol markers you should really check her channel out because she's phenomenal with that now I am just putting some of the finishing touches on it um, using that 71 to color in her eyes. I also take a white Sakura, uh, or sorry, is it a Signo? It is a Uniball, Signo Uniball pen to go ahead and put the whites back in her eyes, the little dots in there because I had colored over them. And then we're going in with 86 and coloring in her bikini top and then I'll just color in the shell and the rest of the objects that are on her and that is nine I believe the six and the nine there's no line underneath of it so I don't know which one is the six and which one is the nine um so it's either six or nine that I used for the shell that's in her hair and then I believe that was 84 for that purple shell but like I said, I read off all of the colors of these Ohuhu markers earlier. So now I'm just taking the BG5 and coloring in that seahorse. I probably would have done him a different color. Um, Clash is a little bit with the background, but it is again, it is what it is. I colored him in without really thinking about how he was. He's so tiny. Um, I wanted to make sure he kind of stood out from the background a little bit. Just finishing up the little touches on her and then I am going to fussy cut her out which took me a little while because I used my Tim Holtz uh, scissors, the, ton the ones from Tonic, the really really long ones to cut most of the pieces and then I went in with my Fiskars scissors, the ones that are kind of the spring handles and went in and cut a lot of the curves where I couldn't get to it with my Tim Holtz scissors. 
So now we are going to be doing the inside of the card and we're going to use the sentiment from the, um, hold on. it is mermaid for each other. It says you've already made a splash. Now go make some waves, which I thought was really cute for this because it's not very specific. It can be a congratulations card. Um, good luck card, things like that. So I stamped that out with the Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. And then I also took from the Sea Life Freebie stamp set, which is one of the ones that I got from MFT for free. Both of those sets, the um, Mermaid for each other and the Sea Life Freebie, they're both from MFT. And I used the Salty Ocean Distress Oxide and inked up the waves. I thought the wave in there would look really nice. Um, I had all these stamp sets put to the side because I felt like they had uh, things to do with under the sea and I tried to use a couple different ones in today's video. I also wanted to use a wood mounted stamp because I feel like people don't use them in videos very much. So I have a huge wall of them which I will show you when I do my craft room tour so excited about that. Uh, my room definitely needs to be cleaned. I had said I was going to do it a while ago and just haven't really gotten around to it because I have tons of projects. But hopefully when I take a staycation, maybe in like a month or so, I will clean up everything and I will do a video of it. But I have a wood mounted um, system or the wood mounted stamps, I have a system for them hanging up on the walls. So I would love to show you guys that because I do have a lot of wood mounted stamps and I feel like I don't really use them. Okay, so the next thing I did was I took the Broken China Distress Oxide and my makeup brush and just went around the edges. I did smudge the very top one just a teeny tiny bit because it wasn't 100% dry, but it's okay. I can tell, I don't know if you really can in the... Um, final project. Again, you can probably see, you as a card maker can probably see your own mistakes and other people probably don't. So we're always our worst and toughest critics. Isn't that right? So after I do that, I'm going to make sure I clean off my work surface because I am a terribly messy crafter. As you can see, I have ink all over my hands. Um, Glad that I'm working from home lately because people probably think that I'm like crazy. I always have different color fingers because of working with distress inks and distress oxides. So I decided before I put the card together that I would spray it a little bit with my distress sprayer full of water just to give it the same kind of front that I did with, or it came the same kind of feeling as I did with the front of the card. I'm going to use my ATG to run glue on the or run tape on the back of it and tape that down to the inside. I'm trying to do the inside of my cards, decorate them as kind of like I do with the outside because I think it gives it that finishing touch. So that is glued down and then we are going to take the front piece and we are going to go over it with a black marker. So when you fussy cut things, this is what I like to do. I like to take a black marker. This one is Artist's Loft. It's a dual tip marker, so it has a nib and a broad brush, like the, um, the chisel tip. And just go around the edges because it just makes it look like you cut perfectly up to the line. It doesn't show any of that white cardstock of the core of the cardstock. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in some spots that, you know, obviously I didn't do a very good job cutting at or it was difficult to get to or it was like a very tight area. So I'm just going to go over those with that black marker and you know, get rid of that white edge that I have. And then after, after that, I am going to take my My Favorite Things On Point Precision Glue and I am going to glue it down to the front of the, I'm sorry, I'm going to glue the front down to the card base first using my ATG again. And then I'm going to use that MFT Precision On Point Precision Glue to glue them down. Now because that is textured, I did eventually put something on top of it so that it would be like push it down so that it would adhere to that stenciled piece and I'm loving now that I see it in the video I'm really loving the way that background came out it looks really pretty like water and um, just has a little bit of sparkle to it so I'm really liking that and that is the glitter gloss from kindred stamps in pool party 
So you, as you can see here, I was having a little bit of a difficult time with it sticking down. So I just had to keep applying pressure and eventually I do put something on top of it so that um, it will stick because it's trying to adhere to one glitter and two, um, it's not a smooth surface because of the glitter gloss. So that's the card for this today. So thank you guys so much for watching and hopping along with us. I hope that you find a bunch of different videos and you enjoy what you've seen. Oh, I'm sorry. I just go back one more time and add the Spectrum Noir glitter pen on top of it. Forgot about that. And just to add a little bit of shine to her tail and to her hair. Oh, now this is the end of the card. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopping along with us. I hope that you found, like I said before, I hope that you found a lot of new artists and got some great inspiration from this hop. And we will see you again on Saturday for the last day of this hop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again real soon. Bye.